to cover as much territory as I can, I'm going to be in Genesis 44. And I'm going to share what the Lord told me to tell you. I'm so, so excited about that. Because this message is a message of revival. This is a message of regeneration. And I'm super excited to share this with you. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you of some facts concerning Jacob and his son Joseph's relationship before we delve into the Bible reading. I believe personally that it was more, more than a father-son relationship. Genesis 37 verse 3 says, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. And that's because Joseph had been born to him when he was old. Not only that, he also made him a distinctive multicolored tunic. I believe that even though Jacob loved all of his sons, he had a special fire, some sort of zeal, some sort of energy for Joseph. And this special fire, this special enthusiasm was shown in verse 34 after he had the fake death report of Joseph. Verse number 34 says, Jacob tore his clothes in grief, put on a sackcloth and mourned many days for his son. Since then, Jacob was a broken man. And that special fire seemed to have gone out. But when he heard Joseph was alive, something happened. And that's exactly what I want us to look at. Open to Genesis 45 verse 25 through 27. Genesis 45 from 25 to 27. And I read, So they went up from Egypt and came to the land of Canaan, to Jacob their father and they said to him Joseph is still alive and indeed he is ruler over all the land of Egypt but Jacob was stunned and his heart almost stopped beating because he did not believe them when they told him everything Joseph had said to them and when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him the spirit of their father Jacob revived underline the word revived jacob revived he revived he got the fire back amen today i want to talk to you about the subject get your fire back get your fire back amen I'm pretty sure that if not all of us, most of us here today have been through a lot of devastating times. The attacks, the adversities, the afflictions, you know, the broken hearts and the excruciating pains. And whether these struggles were due to your own mistakes or because of sin or bad luck, these may have extinguished that initial blazing fire you had for the things of God. Some of you are used to pray and read the Bible almost every day. But now it seems you're completely turned off. In the past, you used to communicate with God, meditate on his word, and spend lots of quality time with him. But now it seems you barely have the time. And like Jacob, the fire that kept you so excited about God and things of God might have gone out entirely. But I've got good news for you today. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, I've got good news for you today. God is going to restore that fire today. Oh, you didn't hear that. I said, God is going to restore that fire today. By the end of today's service, there's going to be a divine restoration. 
and that fire will live again. Can I hear an amen? Yes. The spirit of their father Jacob revived. It revived. Let's look at the word revive or revival for a moment. First, I'd like us to consider what revival isn't. Because, tell you what, there are a lot of misconceptions out there about this word which are not completely true. Number one, revival isn't about getting sinners saved. Mm -hmm. Revival isn't about getting sinners saved. Some people think revival means hosting crusades and outreaches to get sinners to respond to an altar call and turn their lives to Christ. No, that's not revival. That's evangelism. That's reaching out to people with the gospel of salvation and having them confess their sins and take Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. That's evangelism. And that's what the evangelist do. You. Revival is not evangelism. Revival is not getting sinners saved. It's totally different. Number two, revival is in rededication. Now, rededication refers to the decision to return to Christ after falling away from the godly ways. Or simply the act of restoring your godly ways. And can I say this? Most people don't really know what rededication is. In fact, I know some people who, after committing a habitual sin, rededicate their lives to Jesus. Others go even further, repeating the sinner's prayer again and again and again. When they realize they're lying too much, they say the sinner's prayer. After too much fornication, they say the sinner's prayer. After too much stealing, smoking and drinking, they say the sinner's prayer. That's not rededication. That's ignorance. Yeah, that's a fact. That's ignorance. Once you say the sinner's prayer for the first time, you are born again. Your old sinful nature dies and the new nature takes over. So when you keep repeating the sinner's prayer, you're just telling God you don't believe you're truly born again. Listen to me. Being born again took care of your spirit. The new spirit you have right now is the God's kind of spirit. If you're having trouble with sin, don't bother your spirit. It is your head that needs bothering. It is your mind that needs renewing. Amen. Again, rededication is not the same as revival. Rededication in the Old Testament was a familiar event in the Jewish history called renewing of the covenant. For example, in Deuteronomy, we see Moses having the new generation renew their covenant with the Lord. The same is true for Joshua and Samuel. They all had the people of Israel do the same thing in their time. They renewed their covenant with the Lord. Although rededication played a vital role in the Old Testament, it is still beneficial today. Hey there, I know you enjoyed this video. I know you did. Come on now, don't deny that. Don't deny that. Hit that subscribe button. Yes, hit that subscribe button. God bless you so much. I'm so happy. Now, hit that bell to turn on notifications. Come on. Hit that bell. Yes. See you in the next video.